Uh, most of the attendees that come to MIP TV are program makers, program creators, working for television or working in the film business. Can you give us some pointers as to the kind of things that you feel will aid the television industry in terms of how they can also find ways to develop revenue streams that are not traditional television revenue streams? When you talk about the tele television industry, it's of course very clear that uh, there are going to be different channels for, for the content and everything from scheduled broadcasting to over-the-top services to uh, mobile phone and uh, to internet uh, TV and all of that. And I think that the change we, we're seeing right now, and here of course many of you are exploring, is twofold. One is getting the content out to all different type of channels. The second is to actually start to get target groups. I mean, you can start micro-segmenting quite a lot in, in your views of the consumers when you're gonna see how they're consuming and what they're consuming. And then of course, adding to that mobility services uh, in order to get interactivity on that service, especially real-time services. And I think that we're gonna see much more of that usage of different type of channels. And I think that the reason why we are into it is not only because we, we think that technology and the products we have is important, it's also that we think we can manage that complexity. And we are running TV stations all around this world as well because it is uh, coming together much more the media and the telecoms and you cannot sort of just choose one because the consumers are going to want to have all of them. Ideally what you should be looking at as a TV maker, a TV producer, is bringing in these other elements of mobile technology of the kind that uh, Ericsson have been pioneering over the years and in fact you have a consumer lab yeah. where you are testing out some of these elements. Are you looking at the TV business relative to that in your consumer lab? Absolutely, and our consumer lab is doing, uh, has been around for 20 years, I guess 15, 20 <coughs> years. We're doing equally many surveys on TV viewers as we're doing mobile users. B because again, we believe it will all come together. And of course, again, when you have a, a content, you need to think about how you can market it in different type of channels and different type of or strategies for those channels that uh, you can have an aftermarket on a certain channel and you can have the first market on one channel and then you start working it so you can get the much longer tail of the content. And again, remember, five billion people 2015 having broadband, that means that anyone can consume internet in five years. Uh, and that's open up wherever you have content, doesn't, you have no limitation on borders. Are you saying that there are going to be a host of new additional elements that can be brought into television production that would enhance the TV making. Yes, definitely, because the content can be given in so many different type of of, of, uh, of channels. And, and again, uh, the traditional ones we know, but the new ones are, of course, the only thing we know is all the smartphones and the tablets. But there will be even more because the innovation on top of the networks and what type of device you can do. I mean, just think about this. I mean, to a chip set of, with GS, GSM and GPRS, some data functionality, is today costing $5. That means that you can probably put it in to a lamp up here so it communicates when you come in in order to put it on or off. That is where the business case is coming. And of course, if you have a 3G enabled, it's probably five, 10 times more costly. The only reason why it's more costly is the scale. So when we get the scale, it will come down in prices and then you're gonna get business case or things that you never thought about. Give us some kind of idea as to how mobile is also going to touch into the world of VOD. I think the VOD, of course, we have products in that arena quite a lot uh, and uh, being uh, the number one basically in the cable industry on VOD and uh, video on demand. Uh, we see the similar pattern there that video on demand, of course, you're probably never going to consume a movie or something on a mobile phone. I, I, I don't think so because the experience is not going to be good enough. But again, if you think about the tablets coming, which if we've been sitting here three years ago, I, I guess that nobody has thought about the tablet actually coming out. So of course, then you think about, yes, people will start consuming VOD on tablets, which is mobility as well, which we didn't think was the case. So at CES in the beginning of this year, which was almost 100 new tablets announced with 3G capabilities that's going to be launched during the year. So again, it comes back. Every, all consumer electronics coming out starting to get connectivity. And that, of course, is an opportunity for any content and media person because finally it will be communicating. When you look at developing markets and see the link between television, technology yeah. and complexity, this is an area that you feel absolutely comfortable in because you're bringing both solutions and also new tools for the TV producers to have a revenue generation from a source they wouldn't have thought of a few years ago. Definitely. And I, and I think that, 
of course, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic development in countries like India, China, etc. I, I would say we're coming to, to, to phase of this industry where there are more similarities between urban areas and rural areas wherever you are. We have the same challenges of urban areas regardless of where you are in the world today. But of course, in a country like India, I mean, the main or the majority of the population will start with a mobile phone. That's the first time they communicate. And I can tell you, having been out all around the world, it's amazing to see when people get a, a mobile phone or a, or, a, or a connected device to the mobile network. It's not obvious that they will start calling on it. That we, I mean, for us it was obvious, I mean, this is something you call on. It's more obvious that they start looking for information and sending information. And then, by the way, I can call someone as well. So the whole paradigm is changing. And of course, with a very young generation in many of these countries, it, it, they will innovate on top of it. So can you give us just an example of two or three things that you are working on? We won't mention it to anybody outside <laughs> this room. It's top secret, of course. But if you could just give us a couple of things that you feel might be not necessarily game changers, but new additives that would have value to the television production and television creation community. Oh, I can start with one. Uh, we have launched uh, very recently something called PC as a service. Uh, and suddenly, I mean, we have been struggling for a long time to get the PC price down so everybody can have it. We have done it the other way. We're using the cloud. We're using the mobility and the broadband. And suddenly you have basically a dumb receiver only, which is a screen. And all the maintenance, storage, upgrades, softwares, and everything is in the cloud. And then, of course, think about how far you can penetrate it out. We started doing that in Africa for education, meaning that we brought the education out. But that can be done for any type of content that can be brought out. And again, it's built on these pillars. And then, of course, that, that's one thing that we have been doing recently. We, we have also enabled mobile payment platforms or remittance, because finally the phone is, uh, is, it, uh, is a mobile wallet more than a bank account. Uh, I think all of it is enabling sort of usage on top of it for content users, operators to actually seeing that uh, the usage is going up and it's have quality of service. And again, it's about knowing the subscribers and think also about the difference of going mobile. I mean, we have done studies that basically 70% of the internet usage on, on a smartphone is going through an app. It's not going through the search engine. And uh, then you think if you own that app, of course, you can create the uh, uh, connectivity directly with your subscriber, which has not been the case before. Because on the mobile phone, it's not uh, equally easy to start and searching uh, and then go somewhere. But then you have your app. That's how you create your way of doing it. And that, of course, will change the world as well, as there's going to be four or five times more people using mobility for the access to internet than fixed. Ladies and gentlemen, Hans Westberg, please give him a very warm round of applause.